That was Wild Beasts. Next up, it's going to be spiritualized. But first, some more talk with Jason Pierce. I've been interviewing some other, you know, bands and musicians over the last week, and my technique is that I'll write stuff down on a piece of paper and listen to my records and all that. And all I really want to ask is like, what are you going to play tonight? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not prepared, am I? All right. Um, we can come back to that. New, some of the new stuff. I'm kind of. I finished a record two days ago, so I've got that fleeting sense of satisfaction. In yeah. There. And so it's weird just being out of the house and kind of away from that record. And so it's good. to be honest, it's just good to play. Just to, to you know, I've been. I, when you make a record, you get. Well, I don't know how everybody makes a record, but you, I get so inside of it and kind of want to see how it can go and where it can go and and try every opportunity because you only get the only time you can do that is while you're making it. You can't yeah. you can't recall it and say oh, that didn't work. So you have to get it right. And it's um, it's a lot of work, and and I feel like I've been doing that for too long, too long to be healthy. Did you produce it? Yeah, and I wanted to. I wanted to make a kind of rich man's record, you know, where you could explore everything, but I haven't got the money. So I got rid of the thing that costs the most in making music, which is the studio time. Mm -hmm. And I moved it all into my front room. So I had to work harder to, to kind of get the, to make the kind of record I wanted to make. Because I didn't want it to be, I didn't want it to be like a, you know, when you say you make it at home, you kind of picture these kind of lo-fi or unrealized things or, flawed and I kind of wanted to make the kind of record that you would make in you know I, I wanted to make I didn't want to make a record like the Beatles or Brian Wilson or something but I wanted to to have that kind of time to explore the ideas properly. When you said you were, the, the thing to do was to cut out the studio time I mean what you've done is you cut out the studio right I mean does that mean that because you did it in your house or whatever that you had as much time as you wanted or did you still have yeah. to do it? And, and also it's not it's not just time while you're making the thing it's time to live with what you've made and to, to realise that you, to, to, to accept the decisions you've made. So, so, um, so it wasn't all, it wasn't like 24 hour days at home. Some, some days was, you know, some months were three hour days, you know. Um, but it's, it's the time to, to, to say this is done, you know. Mm. This, is, this is where it was meant to go. This is, what, this is what's gonna sound best for it, so. I was gonna ask you that, because one, one thing I've noticed is that you never, you've never shortchanged people in terms of what they get when they buy a record or when they go and see you play live. You know what I mean? It's quite lavish, and some of the other well, records have a lot of like you know brass and strings and you know choirs and all this stuff. I mean, do you have yeah, I mean, do you yeah, have all, um, any of that stuff on on this record? Yeah, but I went out to do that, so I didn't I didn't rec I didn't put the choir in my house, um, but I went away for. a a specific short amount of time in the studio rather than, <coughs> it's all the kind of, um, it, it, so I went in for very specific sessions, you know, and I kind of treated myself on some of it. I went to LA to do the backing vocals because I wanted those, I wanted American voices. I wanted that kind of, um, um, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but I, and I went to Iceland to do the strings. Um, so the kind of sessions were worked in, but they were one day in a studio as opposed to um, a part of a longer time in a studio, you know. And somebody said you should, you know, once you work at home, you start finding anything to do other than work because you're at home. But I kind of do that in expensive studios as well, you know. It's mm -hmm. like nobody likes to sit behind a desk and work, you know. In fact, I think everybody does that at work, don't they? They find, they find something else to do. What's the sound like? On, I mean, what is the... What is the on new the new record? Like? Yeah. Um, Beautiful. I mean, I mean, I wanted to make. I wanted to. I, I, I didn't want to shortchange that record. I wanted to make a pop record, like with absolutely beautiful production and kind of clarity. That um, I'll say the Beatles again, but I didn't want to make a record like the Beatles. But I wanted the kind of clarity that you get on those records. That they're absolutely. That, that you can hear everything. You can. Um, and. I kind of I I I, th I, th I was thinking that a lot of music now more than I've ever known is about looking back. You know, like this is our classic album from ten years ago. This is what we're going to do, kind of thing. And I started to think it's it's the, it's the music I love most. It's this it's rock and roll, and I've got this this fear that it's kind of in, in years to come it'll look 
you'll look back like you look back to 1920s music, like the flappers and the jitterbug and all this kind of grainy film, and it's going to seem like it's it has no bearing on your life, you know. And I think that's kind of sad, um, but inevitable maybe. And I and I I, I wanted to make an, an an epic album now, you know. I didn't want to, I didn't want to make something for the future so you could look back and say well, wasn't that a good time or whatever and I just didn't see any any major competition in that um, but I wanted it to be a pop album I wanted it to be like Clear Spot or uh, Mink DeVille's album or um, Jukebox Babe, Alan Vega you know these kind of these things that weren't weren't hiding behind a kind of fuzz of style or you know like the, it was it was just a clear collection of songs. Okay, we're back live from inside St. James's Church in Dingle, where we're very excited to be bringing you the brilliant Spiritual Eye. 